Hey, what's up and thanks for tuning in. I'm Rob Arnold and today I'm going to demonstrate a simple string changing on a Floyd Rose equipped ESP LTD RA600 electric guitar. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here or anything, but I've done this hundreds of times and follow a tried and true process that keep my guitars in tune, sounding great and behaving the way they should consistently. Perhaps you'll see or hear me describe some new method or technique that offers a different perspective than what you may have been used to in the past. And my hope is that you'll find this video useful when it comes to changing your own strings. So if that sounds good, sit back and let's get right into it. Okay, so starting off here, we've got a guitar that is in tune. In this case, I'm in drop C, which is the tuning that I like to play in most of the time, which is C, G, C, F, A, D, low to high. But everything that I'm gonna describe here, every method, every technique can be used on any guitar, with any bridge, in any tuning, with any type of strings, any scale length, even bass guitars. It's more about the principles of keeping things consistent because in my opinion that is the most important thing about having a consistent guitar a guitar that's consistently in tune all the time the more changes you make changing tuning changing string gauge things like that those are the type of things that can whack out your guitar your intonation your neck and totally a floyd rose the Floyd Rose wants to be treated with consistency. It wants the same gauge strings every time, preferably the same brand. Anytime you make some changes, specifically tuning or string gauge, you're going to need to make some adjustments to get your bridge floating straight and your string height, your, which is your action, all those things the way you like them. But once you get those set up, you just maintain consistency and your guitar should behave properly all the time. Uh, if you need uh, some pointers and some schooling on bridge float or intonation, I also have some videos in my string changing series that goes over those things and you could take a look at that. But let's assume that your guitar is fairly well set up at the time and you just want to change the strings. They're old or you know, they're just not feeling good, that sort of thing. What I like to do is I like to start with the guitar in tune. So I've tuned it up. It's pretty close here. It just needs to be pretty close. C, G. C, F, A, D. And the newer strings are, the easier they are to keep in tune as well. These strings are pretty old, so there's a lot of stretch on them, and uh, they, they tend to get out a little bit here. The very first step when you're using a Floyd Rose is to get your fine tuners here at about a midway point. Not too low, not too high. That's so. After you get the strings changed and you tune up with the tuning knobs up here and you lock your nut, you have room for fine tuning, but you want to get it as close as possible first with the tuners here before you do anything with the fine tuner. So just keep in mind the rule of thumb is, is get the fine tuners all about level and about midway. Again, not too low, not too high. Start like that and you won't have to worry about it later. If you do forget that, it's not the end of the world, it's just that after you get tuned up here, you may realize you need to you lock your nut and you need to tune something uh, at the fine tuner and you're like, oh, I didn't leave myself any room. I'm, I'm too sharp and uh, I need, you know, whatever. So just get in the middle, you leave yourself room there. So we got that good. Again, we're in tune. And what I like to do here is I'm just gonna change one string at a time, starting with my sixth string here. And I'm gonna take this off and the whole guitar will go out of whack because it's all based on a spring and tension system. Everything plays together. You know, and everything needs to be adjusted together in little increments over and over again to get everything to sit just right. You do all those things and you spend enough time on it, it will eventually just sit right and it could sit right forever. It could be perfectly in tune a year from now if you do the right, the right things uh, and get it set up properly the first time. So I'm gonna go one string at a time and as I take off the sixth string, I'm gonna put on another sixth string, get it all stretched out, tuned up, and retune the guitar again, and it'll be ready to play just with a fresh sixth string. And then when I go to do that for the fifth string, I do the same thing, the fourth string, third string, and so on. And by the time I get to the end, it should be fairly well in tune, and there'll be minor adjustments that need to be made. 
if I were to not take those steps or if I were to take all the strings off at the same time, then I'm just starting from a much harder place to get back to perfect tune in. If you just do it one by one and tune up one by one, it goes quick and everything should sound and feel just right. Sometimes I will want to take all the strings off at the same time, but I only do that maybe once a year or so. Take everything off so I can polish the fretboard, clean with a toothbrush, I put some guitar polish on there and I get into all the nooks and crannies, stuff like that. And then when I change the strings, I'll just block this off by putting something behind there. I have this, this plastic pen that I'll usually stick under the uh, trim block screws here, um, you know, to keep it in one spot. And then, you know, you can't use this method that I'm talking about with string by string, you're taking them all off. But uh, again, if you don't need to do that, if you don't need to take all the strings off at the same time, uh, just the one by one method and tuning up as you go gives the best results at the end. So let's get started. First thing, I've already unlocked my locking tuners here. I'm gonna start unwinding. One thing, and I'll mention this again later, is that you want the wind to go on the same side of the tuner for every string. You don't want to have this one going around the left, this one going around the right. You know, keep them all the same. And uh, whatever way you want to have, have them go around is uh, is fine, but I like them to have them go around the left. Maybe it's just this headstock, I don't know, but it seems like it'd be pulled over to the right too much there if I had it going around the right, maybe kind of whacked out. This keeps them kind of straight in line. So I go around the left, all of them wrapping clockwise. Pull that out of there now. I did it gently so I didn't scratch anything. Now I'm gonna just cut this off right here so that I can pull it through my nut. Garbage can ready for all the waste. Allen wrench down here. I like to have my whammy bar on so I can push there as I loosen this just enough to get the string out of there and so that I can get another string back in. Right now I'm using DR high beams, a custom 11 through 52 set. I mean, you can get 11 through 52 sets of anything here. I just like a, a 20 wound as, a, as a, opposed to a, usually an 18 plane that would come in an 11 through 52 set. Some sets include both a plane and a wound for your uh, G string there. But um, the set I just asked them to make for me. And they did, and I'm loving these strings. They sound great, feel great, never break. So we'll start with our sixth string here. Clip off the ball end. Now, I'm using my left hand here again. I push on the whammy bar that makes it nice, you know, so they can get a little more access. Get it in there, I'm holding it down tight. Do it in the hand first. Grab my Allen wrench. Now I have to tighten it snug, not too tight because it crack the little block, which will happen eventually after many, many changes, especially if you over tighten. So I get it snug just so I can't really turn it anymore, but if I really had to, I could. But then want again, it would break the block. Through the nut. And my method for up here. I like to have, I know you can't see, but the eyelet hole of this tuner, I always have them pointing at me. My body is over here and it's at me. If it's not, I would turn it so that it is. And I go around once, hold this down and through. Six string is the hardest because it's the thickest. And you wanna leave yourself here, I'm holding this up here. That's about uh, three inches off the neck there. You know, it's kind of a guessing game. It's gonna be too much or too little, how much I'm leaving myself. And what I'm talking about here is if I leave, if it's too much, if it's too high, I'm gonna have to wrap that way too much and it's not gonna be a nice even wrap. If I don't leave myself enough, I may not have enough wraps around it. That looks about good right now. Let's see what happens. This little guy in there will eventually tighten up. I'm holding this up with one hand as I tighten with the other. As this tightens here, 
put my finger out. And we have a beautiful wrap around there. I pull this straight up. Sometimes they're hanging over like this, whatever. I pull it straight up and I keep it on till the very end. Uh, but if I pull it up like that so that it's not in the way of the other ones when we're going. And I always just cut them off kind of out of superstition all the way at the very end in case some adjustment needs to be made. And we're right about a C. Perfect. See, I've done this a couple times. All right, now, grab in here, put some pressure where the string meets the saddle. Just keep some pressure there. Fingers underneath the string and then push down with my thumb. Go the whole length. Just a couple times. That's gonna loosen it. So we're gonna sharpen the string. Back up to a C. Do it again. Again, pushing down there, right around the saddle. Fingers underneath the string. Thumb pushing down. You can see it's flattening every time because we're stretching it out, but it's flattening less. It takes less of an adjustment, less of a sharpening to get it back up to see. You can stretch this out up here a little bit. I'm probably gonna do this four or five times so that it stretches as little as possible as I go through the other strings. Again, each time that I do this, the amount that it detunes as I'm stretching it out gets less and less. Good, so we're pretty close there. I'm a little sharp on C, but that's cool because I'm gonna redo the sixth string every time, every string I do. So after I do the fifth, exact same method, I'll restretch the sixth, keep everything tuning as I'm going so that the time I get to the first string, it's all pretty well in tune. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go to the fifth. Clip it off here. You could yank it through, but again, you don't wanna scratch anything, mess up your nut there. With that. Pull it through, whammy bar down, give yourself some access here. Loosen. Grab a fresh guy. Clip off the ball. Repeat the process. Whammy bar down. In there, I like to keep it nice and centered. The saddle block there. Tighten to snug. It's just a feel thing. Again, the eye hole is facing me right now so that when I go around like this, hold it down, I'm just gonna go right through. And that's this is now on top of the string, it's, the string itself coming through, one on top. Hold tight. Got about two or three inches here. Maybe a little much. Good. Again here, I'm holding this up because I want to create tension on here for nice tight wraps. If I just let it hang like this and then went to tighten it up, there's no tension here and it would just kind of wrap loosely. I want to keep this tight. Pull the string straight up so it's out of the way. It's tightening. Take my left hand out. And G, start the stretching process. Fingers on the saddle there. Stretch out. Now, this is a nice G, but it's gonna have, have an effect on the six strings, where it's C sharp there. So we bring that down, restretch the sixth, retune the sixth. A lot of this process, the stretching and everything, is that your guitar is playable right away. When you're touring or having your strings changed every single day, 
You don't want to have to wait a while for the strings to settle. You just want them to be playable right away. So the more you stretch them and the more of this process you go through, the quicker the guitar is playable right after the strings are changed. Round, holding it down, flat against the headstock, through the aisle. Each string requires slightly less stretching because it has less wind and less mass. And then I'll go back and tune. Look, pretty close to see. So what we've been doing is working. Less of a discrepancy every time. And then it gets faster and faster. Sixth string. It's the hardest in the fifth string. They require the most stretching. Whack the guitar out the most. And once you get those behaving properly, it starts to go fast. Back to the sixth. Down to the fifth. Fourth. Third. Still in tune. Four down, two to go. One of the reasons I like making videos like this is because sometimes it's just helpful to see somebody else do it, you know? Maybe you're new to guitar playing. Maybe you just got a guitar with a Floyd Rose. It's your first one and you just don't know how to do it. You know what I mean? Everybody can cook a burger, but a lot of the time seeing someone else, like a professional cook, do it gives you ideas or inspiration. So uh, that's uh, a big reason why I like to do these type of things. You know, because some guys are like, oh, okay, who doesn't know how to change strings? But you know what? There are a lot of people that don't. A lot of people have never seen it done before. And so just a little demonstration, again, with a method that works well for me, is something that I hope to help you guys with. Last string is on. Doing the final stretches. Still a couple more steps to go. Please stay tuned. Okay, see, because of all that stretching, what little additional tuning needed to be done there. The guitar is in tune and ready to be played right now if we wanted to, but there's still some extra steps that we're going to take here, uh, like cutting off the strings here. So what I've learned works best, and I've done a million different things for this, but cutting it as close to the tuner as possible. And then there's one more step after that too. Again, I never like to do this until all the strings are on and I'm confident that everything worked out properly. Now I'm going to carefully use the end of my wire cutters here and push these down because we all know that it sucks when you get your finger on there and get that little, get that little drop of red blood there, you know. Uh, what, what, other color, what other color would it be, right? So I'm just pushing these down, aiming them downward carefully. If you slip, chip your paint. So I'm carefully pushing these down. Bending them down and out of the way is the goal. Six strings the toughest because it's the thickest. Good. And we are good there. Give it another tune. Actually, at this point, I'm going to stretch out with the whammy bar here. I haven't involved him a lot yet. This thing's going to be pretty out of tune here because of that, but that's good. We're doing all the stretching now so that when you hand this guitar to Kirk Hammett on stage, it doesn't go out of tune. You know what I mean? That's what all those techs need to master. Still nice and close. I think we did a good job. Okay. Still not done yet. A little polish. This tuning gives, uh, always gives a lot of fingerprints. I like to keep my guitars as nice as possible year round. If you guys are interested too, I want to show you. I like to polish the neck, give the neck a nice cleaning too. And I wanted to show you the back here, what I've got going on. The three spring method spread out in like a, uh, an upside down V there. You see, that's what I've found works. I get a lot of questions about that. How many springs they have back there? 
you know, stuff like that. I like to take out the whammy bar too. And that, how many springs to have back there and in what configuration. This is the one that works best for me with the three. Again, check out my perfect float video uh, for more tips on getting a good float. So I like my neck to feel nice and slick. So I polish it up every time. Getting the nooks and crannies. For a 10 year old guitar, this thing is still in pristine condition, which is the way I like it. Let's give it another tuning and then we will lock our tuners and fine tune. I always like to tune up to tune, like if I'm sharp here, I'm gonna go back down below C and then back up to C so that it has tension on it all the time. I f just a superstition. So again, if I'm sharp, I'll go below tune and tune up to it. And in this case, you don't need to be perfect, just close because we're gonna use the fine tuners to get closer. And if you don't have a Floyd Rose, you do wanna get perfect at this point. Okay, the whole guitar is going a tiny bit sharp right now. And that might be a problem, I'm not sure, yet. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lock the tuners. I mean the nut. And sometimes I find that locking the, the nut up here puts just a little additional bit of pressure on the strings which sharpens them all. Now I've been told that the string tree, its job is to not only keep the strings in line there or whatever, to prevent what I just said from happening. But we'll see. So I've locked all my, all my my nut screws there, and it went quite a bit sharp. But let's just see if we left ourselves enough room with the fine tuners here, which we did. Perfecto. It's looking good. Let's do one more thing here. Give it a final tune and a polish and we'll be done after this little tip. Some of you heard me say, if you're new to my channel and my videos, you've never seen this. What I like to do is I take a small piece of gaff tape here. Like that. Put it on the back of the headstock like that, and I'm gonna write uh, the tuning, drop C, 11 through 52, and today's date. This way, when you ask yourself, how old are these strings? You know exactly, you can be a little more consistent. I like to do that with the battery too. Put a little piece of tape on the battery with the month that it was changed and you just know how old that battery is. Otherwise, how in the world are you gonna know? And you know, time flies sometimes. Sometimes it could be six, eight, 10 months, a year or more before you change your strings. But this is a little reminder. Why are you going out of tune? Why isn't your bridge floating right? Stuff like that, sometimes a fresh set of strings. Put on in the method I've described here will correct your issues. Alrighty, good there, almost done. Wham back in, one more final tuning, polish, and a strum. Let's hear how it sounds. Sounds good to me. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Again, I hope this video was helpful for you just to see how I go about changing strings here. Again, every method and technique I described can be applied to any guitar. It's just more about the method and the technique and just seeing somebody else do it, as I said. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please share it with your guitar buddies and come back and see me on my channel for all sorts of other things I got going on. Rob Arnold, Rob Arnold World. I got a guitar instructional DVD through the Rock House Method that you can get from my online store as well, as well as my Kemper Tone Crate Custom Pack. All the classic Chimera tones, Elite tones, stuff like that. All the links in the description below. If you want more, come back and see me again. Thanks, guys. Cheers. One more thing I wanted to show off here, guys. Check it out. My float is money. Nice and parallel to the body there. And then finally, this is the way my wraps turned out. Gorgeous, if I do say so myself.